is about to be satisfied. <laughs> My place is five minutes on oh, no. St. Francis Street. Okay, I'll just go to the bathroom first. I'll wait for you outside. You are a shark. Aurora, I adore you. Greg now faces a different kind of crisis, one that requires his higher brain. But just when he needs it most, it's been stifled by alcohol. Oh no! His primitive brain is left to work out what to do. And its solutions are never subtle. Adrenaline diverts blood towards Greg's muscles, maximizing their strength. Hello? He's ready for a fight. Can somebody open the door? Sustained aggression demands energy. So adrenaline also liberates stored supplies of sugar to keep his muscles going. With the prospect of pleasure snatched away, Greg goes in search of dopamine again. But his only source is more alcohol. Hello? Yeah, do you know where St. Francis Street is, please? No, mate. Yeah, do you know where St. Francis Street is at all? No. Excuse me, do you know where St. Francis Street is, please? No, sir. In the past four hours, Greg has drunk the equivalent of eight bottles of beer. His liver works hard to break down the alcohol. And this disrupts other liver functions, including the control of his blood sugar levels. Greg feels desperately hungry. Pizza. Let's get a pizza. Gotta get a pizza. Come on, I must eat some pizza, come on. Can I order a pizza that you can deliver, please? Yeah, hello? Hello, excuse me. Hello. Yeah, do you know uh, do you know where St. Francis Street is? Not at all. Alright, cheers. Greg? Excellent man, cheers. Superb. Half an hour later, Greg has consumed the equivalent of four more bottles of beer. He's drinking it eight times faster than his liver can get rid of it. His higher brain gave up on him hours ago. Now even his primitive brain is starting to shut down. As his limbic system falters, his brain is unable to control the most basic bodily functions. Too much water is passing from his blood into his bladder. No matter how much he drinks, his body passes more. He's getting dehydrated. Greg has now consumed the equivalent of 14 bottles of beer. Alcohol has reached the base of his brain. 
Here it starts to sedate his cerebellum, the part of the brain which has kept humans upright ever since we first stood up on two legs. Luckily for Greg, the alcohol in his spinal cord has switched off many of the nerves which feed pain signals to his brain. If it weren't for its dangerous side effects, alcohol would be the perfect anesthetic. Greg's brain is now saturated with alcohol. Barely any signals pass through his brain cells. Yet remarkably, a one-off drinking binge like this won't kill any of them. But if Greg were to do this more often, he could cause his brain permanent damage. Greg's hangover has many causes. The fluid lost from his system has left his brain dehydrated. His blood is full of toxins produced by his liver as it breaks down the alcohol. His higher brain has started to function again. And it's just beginning to appreciate what his primitive brain drove him to last night. What are you doing here? Oh. Did you follow me home? No. No, I was, I was trying... Yeah. I got you these. So you remember us kissing? Yeah, of course. And you don't regret it? You look like you could do with a coffee. You better come inside. 